okay, he got the rabbit, you know? This is how it started. <laughs> this is how it ends. <laughs> so basically, um, barely reviewable is not the kind of review you want to get on your device, on your consumer product, okay? If this is like the review you get like in YouTube, if this is the news, like as a consumer tech company, you're kind of cooked, okay? Uh, which is kind of funny because as you guys know, like uh, this isn't the first time he did it. He's kind of like known for this now, which I think is a hilarious brand to have. You know, like imagine you're like the 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 boogeyman of like consumer tech. Like imagine you're like the boogeyman, like the, the people that startup founders in 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 tech, in AI, in like even in freaking cars. You know, like are, are like afraid of at night. You're like, oh, let's let's ship this, but like maybe make sure that my keys doesn't get it. <laughs> um, there's a few things that like kind of like irked me a bit. Okay, so number one. People had like this take that um, he isn't supposed uh, to to uh, he isn't supposed to like have an opinion on this, right? And he isn't supposed to like have an opinion that's damaging. I kind of disagree. Um, my 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 personal uh, POV on this is like with every reviewer, like big or small, that it's their job. And if you're shipping something that doesn't work, I don't know, build better products. Period. You know, it's, it's his POV to share his POV. This is like why people tune in. I think we all agree on that. One thing where I personally don't agree with the public sentiment is like how people make fun of the device in general. Um, it, it's not good. Okay, let's say it. Like it's not done. It's not ready. It's not like there where it should be. But the argument that this should be an app or the argument that um, this kind of stuff makes no sense and so on and so on, I, I highly disagree. Um, at Product Hunt, I always had this saying that you need like two really stupid ideas to come up with like one really good idea. And I feel like the same is here. It's you basically explore problem spaces, you explore solution spaces, right? So this for me here is like a hardware exploration, you know? And sometimes this stuff works, sometimes this stuff doesn't work, you know? But I think the main problem is that they sell it as a ready done consumer tech product and that's definitely not where it is. And selling future features doesn't really fly with average consumers. But the other take on this, at least from my point of view, is like no average consumer is buying this. This is like gadget nerds who are buying this. And like uh, Kitsa has like a like a, a role with him with them like since a few days. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. But I, I kind of disagree here. Like so, I think it's awesome that people are exploring stupid ideas. Because sometimes behind a stupid idea is like a genius idea, right? So TBD, that's just my opinion. Okay, more importantly, uh, another take here, okay? We are back. We see startup is freaking back, okay? We are so back, you have no idea. We are so freaking back. XAI, or basically Croc, as we, as we casually call it, uh, apparently is raising at an $18 billion valuation. And that's pre-money. So we're talking, the fuck do I know? Like 25 in total, I guess. This is insane, okay? Ah, it's 6 million, so it's like 24 in total. Um, this is an insane valuation. There's only two problems that I currently see, okay? An 80 million, yeah. Uh, problem number one is the founder denies it, which I think is freak, like, <laughs> this is not the kind of, position you want to be as an investor you know like <laughs> um, obviously that might just be narrative control and obviously this might just be like just rumors who knows but uh, I think this is freaking hilarious like imagine <laughs> you're one of the in investors working on that deal and like publicly the founder denies it like every LP is calling you like what the hell is happening here okay uh, number two which I think is genius which makes me very happy because this means we're back into bullshit valuation times is the number 18 is very very interesting to me because it reminds me of something that might remind remind you guys as well it's exactly the same valuation as ftx was like raised at right so among other runs but we are back into crypto peak of the market what the fuck are people doing valuations if it's true i don't know it's a rumor who knows you know but like we are back as an investor myself i already bought like a fuck ton of champagne because this means like there's markups coming you know like this makes my job easy i don't have to invest in good products i can just invest in whatever and people are like marking it up that's great you know so like let's, let's see where this is going cheers thanks to sequoia we are officially back um 
Topic number three uh, for me for like, the news of this week is um, Europe was, had like a big discussion this week. Um, you know, like in Europe is like this um, this place in the uh, far east of America. It's a place where like, you know, like where Russians go over the weekend to buy like a house or like a city or something like that. Uh, beautiful regions uh, known for like old traditions. And that's pretty much it. Like definitely no tech or anything. Um, there's a little bit of an energy to change that, which I'm a huge fan of it. Like, so Pete um, had like a huge rant. There was a few people having a huge rant about like European needing acceleration. And him being him, like he just said, like, you know what, fuck it, let's make like a logo for this. Let's give this a name. Let's, let's move, push this forward, which I freaking dig. Um, I did also something. I, I wrote like a longer blog post because this is like one of my personal pet peeve topics. There's like two pet peeve fuck topics I have here. Like number one is I... I'm extremely critical about Europe as an investment market. Uh, I have like more than 100 investments and I think like maybe 30 of them are like in Europe and like even maybe, I think maybe less, you know. So I'm very critical of it as a market, you know. But it's not the mean that America makes it out to be. And that's something I would like to a little bit change. Um, and also there's like a few pet peeves I have here around um, how Europe works as a startup market, um, mostly around the fact that we don't have an easy way to invest. If you actually want to invest in Europe, you basically have to understand roughly 30 different entities and all the different gotchas they got, which no reasonable investor will ever do. And it, it's actually the more you go into details, the more absurd it gets. You know, like um, if you want to, for example, let's say you want to invest into an Italian limited, whatever it's called. I honestly don't even know how the entities are called there. Um, you basically need to, um, I will go into this a little bit more next week, okay? Because there's a, <laughs> I will do next week like a game, which is like I tell a completely crazy fact and you tell me if it's right or making it up, okay? But in Italy, like it comes down to the fact if you actually uh, want to invest in Italy, you essentially, if you're a transparent VC vehicle, you need to share all of your LPs and they, to some extent, become tax liable in Italy, which no LP in your fund will ever accept. So basically, you cannot invest in Italy. And there's a few other nuances like that for Spain. There's a few other nuances like that for uh, Germany and a few other countries. Everything is a freaking shit show when it comes to that. And uh, next week, I want to do two things, okay? I want to do the Euro hype special. Uh, I want to change the narrative a bit. Uh, I think we don't know how uh, freaking epic Europe is actually when it comes to technology. And I want to like change that. I, 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 I have like stats. I have them all. Okay. Um, this is number one. And number two, I also want to also like talk a little bit about like the problem of actually investing in Europe and like what this means as an investor. And why American investors are literally running away from uh, investment deals when they see it's a GmbH, okay? Um, and I, I will go to this next week. Next week is the big Euro hype uh, special. Uh, we're doing Eurodance, we're doing yodeling. Everything will be there, okay? Um, and more important, like most important fact here is I want to like, kind of like show how awesome Europe actually is as a startup ecosystem. There's like a few things that are, people are just don't realize how how like how how far we actually are currently because we're so much used to the memes of the America. Um, on the other hand, I also want to show the dark side, like what the reality of a lot of the problems are that we have. Okay. So like that's next week. This week, um, I want to talk about ideas. Before I get there, uh, this is the news section. Uh, from your point of view, is this stuff like cool? You know, like I want to do like a little bit more like that. Okay. Like send me maybe afterwards like a few DMs what you think about this. Um, I, I want to do something in this direction because I think like startups are like to some extent hilarious, you know, and I, there's like so much happening here, you know, um, I agree with, uh, v Vinaya, uh, is this an Indian name? Um, I agree with, uh, with you. Europe is not a bad place to, to, to start your company from. Um, and, but there is like a few realities that we need to change. And that's, this is like the big topic of next week. Okay. So this week, uh, ideas. Why this topic? Uh, number one, I got like a lot of input from uh, uh, founders that they basically don't know what to demo here uh, or like they have products, but it doesn't feel like a strong idea. You know what I mean? Like they, they built, for example, uh, um, I had one that like, wanted to demo like a, a, a feed app basically, you know, where you can see like uh, different blocks. 
Um, and they weren't convinced themselves if this is like such an interesting product to show. Uh, you constantly have like AI assistants and this kind of stuff, you know. There's like a lot of, let's say, um, a lot of inbound I get where I know that there's talented people working on really, really good core like technologies you know like they're using the right tools they're using the right like everything is there and if they would just apply this and like slightly shift to something else they might be onto something really really big and have the same effort but like multiple times uh, uh better output martin uh martin just said in the chat which i fully agree with that um great place to live in europe but he would like to have a safe um and like other standard documents exactly exactly this is it uh, this is like, guys, I, uh, next week I want to like uh, 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 share a few thoughts of mine here and also like an initiative I want to start. Um, I don't want to spoil it yet, okay? Uh, but I uh, uh, have a few things here. But today we're talking about ideas, okay? <laughs> I was actually thinking if I should do the European one today, like spontaneously, just like throw everything overboard and like do this one. But I have so, so much good material that I was like, no, I want to do this proper, okay? Um, back to ideas. So there's a lot of ton, there's a ton of advice on ideas out there, and what I didn't want to do in this uh, session is basically just repeat what you anyway know like and see on Google's, you know like the typical answers that you see in every uh, VC blog post that you see um, like Y Combinator has a few pages like this. This isn't really that interesting um, from my point of view. You know what I mean? Um, I wanted to share a little bit more like thoughts that I have, which I don't feel like I constantly say everywhere else. Okay. Um, number one, uh, disclaimer around any advice that I give. Um, I don't think there is any advice that's particularly like correct. You know, everything is extremely contextual. I always say to people like, do whatever you think is right. If you end up successful, you're right. And the same is true with like the advice that, that that's very common here, you know, like solve your own needs, you know, or like do market research. All of that is could like is correct, doesn't sound bad, right? Um, from my point of view, it's also something where I'm kind of like, I don't know, why do you tell nerds that they should, should solve their own ideas? You know, like you have like tech nerds and you're like, hey, solve your own ideas, solve your own ideas. You end up with these kind of people. Do you know what that is? Um, can you guess what this is? It's, I think it's exactly what you think it is, okay? I actually, like, I removed the audio from this one because uh, I think, like, family members of mine are watching this show and I don't... <laughs> this is already, like, hard enough. Um, this is what you get when you tell nerds to, like, solve your own needs, you know what I mean? Um, this is actual quotes that the thing is saying. Uh, fill me with your alpha seed. I mean, honestly, might be the worst thing that ever came out of Alpha uh, 11 Labs. <laughs> but like, this is what you get when you have like solve your own needs, right? But uh, just to be right, uh, like to be specific, I'm not saying this is a bad product. Like it has a market, you know, uh, like sex toys have been forever, have been around forever. They have a market, especially this one. I can like see a very clear customer profile. You know, like you, is how it says here, like, like, um, uh, touch me with your <clears throat> uh, uh, brine, you know, like it's a clear market and a clear customer, brine. And I can see it with him, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a good product. There's a clear value prop, you know, especially with this, I think they're onto something. I think if you like go into the mindset of a typical brine, you want to get into like the top 1%, you know, like you want to like be like rejuvenate, you know, be like compete with the top percentage of 20 year olds you know like in penile trust there's like this thing that the ufc has is like a power cube where you can like punch against you know and this is like happening when eddie hall is punching it what? so my thinking is like maybe we just combine this wait a second maybe we just combine this wait, what did my dink break one second like Keynote decided that it doesn't like me anymore. Keynote? What's happening? Give me one second, folks. Okay. Uh, we just combine it. Like we do full global leaderboards. This is, I think this is honestly a, a perfect startup idea. 
uh, make it hyper competitive. Like there's anyway like a big crisis around uh, uh, dating and everything apparently, you know, so like make this a, 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 a huge global competitive thing and so on and so on. Okay, anyway, how did we get here? Uh, we walk and talk about ideas, okay? So the general advice is it's super contextual and also like a lot of early ideas just sound stupid. And this is like one of the problems we have in startups. Um, a lot of things when you hear them the first time sound like ideas that your stoner friend could say. You know, like uh, jump into a, a random person's car, you know, and it's Uber. Like who the hell would do that? Like I literally still remember that this is like a thing my parents told you not, not to do. Uh, hey, it could like just block and but shorter, you know, like this is a weird idea or like I can't drink a leaf, you know, like this is tea, like big ideas sound stupid originally. And even like stuff like Airbnb, like imagine a website where you can like just share your room and most importantly, your biggest competitor is doing it completely for free. Yeah, you know, those things turn out to be big, you know. Um, the problem we have in our industry is like nobody really knows early on. You know, like, for example, PayPal was like uh, voted like one of the worst ideas ever in 1999. Um, and as we know, um, Peter Thiel was kind of successful with it, right? The other thing is like to make it even worse, like companies pivot. For example, most people don't even notice, like, but like Hugging Face originally wanted to do AI companions or AI boyfriends and girlfriends and like, like this kind of stuff, you know? Uh, but they were like way too early and the funny thing is whenever they showed their product to like other people those people were like more interested in their tech like how they make it work and they wanted to use that themselves they wanted to have like that as a service right so that is the reason why it changed but this is the reason why like it's called hugging face because of this smiley emotion it's that's what the original thing they wanted to, to do another good example is like slack for for pivots it's like if the folks at slack originally wanted to build an app a game uh, with like real-time messaging and all this kind of stuff. The game wasn't that good, never really got traction, but like the, the real-time messaging like worked really well and the whole socket stuff they built for it was like working really well. So like they completely pivoted on this. The, the funny, the fun fact with uh, Slack is actually that the same people, uh, the same founder team uh, beforehand built actually Flickr, which also started as a game. Um, and they also had to pivot away when they ran out like of runway. Um, and uh, they realized that a lot of their users like using the galleries for profiles to share like images and everything and this is like okay maybe just focus on that part and this is how Flickr started so anyway sooner or later this guy will build an amazing game and won't get distracted by a billion dollar idea and I'm seriously praying for him but until then he will do enterprise software so uh, back to the common advice one thing I wanted to do today is I wanted to share a few thoughts that I don't think you have everywhere okay I'm not saying that necessarily that all of them are good but I think that at least um they are not the typical stuff, I hope at least, okay? Uh, so let's see. Um, number one, um, know what you want. And this is a very, very common problem that I see. Um, if you want to build a side project, a, a non-VC company or VC fundable startup, all three have like very different evaluation criteria. And my absolute pet peeve is changing that. You know, and you can like easily break it. So like, for example, like, why do I build like a side project? I want to learn something, I want to like have fun. In this case, the, for me personally, it's just important how quickly can I actually ship it? And like, is it like, it doesn't matter if it's like a huge, small or whatever, it can be tiny, but like, I want to get it out there and I want to like learn something. Um, if you see fundable startups, like there's the reality, can this actually get funding? You know, the problem that I regularly see is uh, that people jump in between with the evaluation criteria. So basically like, yeah, it's a great idea, but like, how can this get big, you know? Or yeah, this is a great idea, but how do we actually make uh, early money with this, you know? And what, what you essentially are doing is you're jumping around with the evaluation criteria. And this is personally for me, like one of my pet peeves, because you can kill any idea with stupid questions, you know? Like I, I, I frequently tell people that I don't care for devil's advocate, like any person out there who is like not a complete sociopath has enough in, in imposter syndrome and has enough like self-doubt that they have like enough reasons why something might not work. What you actually want to do is like find reasons why it could work, you know, but it's really, really easy to change um, uh, uh, the evaluation criteria for your ideas and then constantly like just essentially abandon every idea, even in brainstorming. Um, as a quick side note, right now is an amazing time to start non-VC companies. Uh, the VC market just doesn't really know what to do right now. Uh, it 
we, we you, you can basically right now uh, start companies that have um one second let me jump here you can right now like start companies that make money for example like i'm a big fan of like danny's project um headshot um and a few others and those won't like those in 2021 all had like competitors that got like big funding and you can say like what you want about VC money, but like if your competitor can just hire a large team and like underprice you because they don't care for any revenue margins whatsoever, that gets boring really, really quickly and can dry you out as like a, a, a bootstrapping founder or like a, a solo founder or anything like that. Uh, this doesn't happen right now. They won't get any funding, you know? And the other good thing is like all of the competitors who did get funding, like because they jumped the last VC ship, they have potentially too much funding right now and they're bloated, you know. Um, they have like overpaid their uh, the salaries of the team. They maybe hired too many people and so on and so on. So they need to cut revenue. Uh, they need to cut their, their uh, burn rate. They're like in a very bad decision uh, situations by default because by default, they will run out of money and cannot raise again, but also have like a burn that like forces them to run out of money. So they have like at this point, they have like multiple decisions. Like decision number one, is we just cut our burn, we fire a few people, and we kind of try to make it work. The problem is at that point, uh, you're telling your investors that you're essentially considering this now like a bootstrap business, you know, unless you find a smart way to frame it as like a temporary thing, which is in this kind of case is very hard. Um, at that point, they most likely will ask you to just like give half of your money, the money back that you raised, which also means that your bank account is not depleted. This is a very bad situation to be in and to receive, have received funding. Okay. So new ones won't get money. The old ones who got the money actually have a death clock. And that's the unfortunate truth right now. Uh, the other good thing is like a lot of your potential customers are already like really educated because a lot of people in the past had the funding to, to do marketing and everything. And they're willing to try new solutions and, uh, because they were like trained the last few, five, six years to constantly try out new companies, you know? So it's a great time to run, uh, to, to start non-VC companies. Um, on the other hand, if you want to go to VC, it's a horrible time to fundraise. Um, for the simple reason that VC money is currently tight that because they, they, they struggle raising themselves. Like, VC, like the reason why startups don't get that much money, money right now is because we see struggle to raise themselves. And the same is the same uh, uh, scenario that you have currently with startups where like a few startups get a lot of funding and everybody else gets like very little or hard, hard, hardly any. Is it true with like VCs? Like most of the LPs are now flocking like to the big brand um, uh, 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 firms, you know, like uh, no pension fund, uh, uh, manager ever got fired for investing in Andreessen Horowitz kind of mindset, you know, and they won't invest in all the other funds. So like all the all the other funds are currently like also like very tight on money, you know. Anyway, but if you want to go in VC, you need to pick an area that, that gets funding. And my favorite hack here is actually request for startups, which is a kind of an obvious one. But I think a lot of people uh, misunderstand them. Like these are not lists where you should look for ideas that what you want to build in. These are lists for areas uh, where you can get funding. And the, the, the POV I have here is not so much the specific ideas that get listed, but more the general narrative around them, like the, how they think about it, how they frame it. And what you can do is you can take like ideas that you have and can try to like push them slightly into those narratives. Um, right now, from my point of view, um, uh, evaluating ideas around VC, potential VC cases, the main evaluation right now is not like how big it can get, but like, can you get funding? And from my point of view, the best thing you can do to like uh, 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 evaluate this like really quickly is there's like roughly I would say ten good requests for startup lists out there. See if you like fit in any of those, and if you don't, then like a try to realign, like adjust your narrative, like push slightly into this direction, or like abandon the idea. As hard as it sounds, at least my personal opinion. If you don't care about VC, which I highly recommend to do, uh, if you don't care about VC, move on trends fast. Um, a second, perfect. Um, if you don't care about VC, move on trends fast. It's, um, for example, stability AI comes out, you know, ton of people are making stuff with it. And that's exactly what you want to do. There is currently this beautiful time where you can take a new tech and build a product that works for, let's say, six months, if you're lucky, 24 months, you know, 
until it becomes a commodity and like a whatever other stuff people are using until it gets like so many competitors like this like it has a, a moment it will be like no longer making any money but you have like let's say six to 24 months where you can make a lot of money and you can realistically extract a few hundred k to a few million out of those obviously my absolute favorite one for this is pete um a, a good friend of mine um he's godlike when it comes to this he's like absolutely godlike and uh i, I took a, a uh, picture of his uh, uh twitter profile recently because i realized something he has like all these startups where he currently makes money and like uh, my uh, uh, <laughs> my brother basically like <laughs> published a, a, a merchandise shop and already like made 8k with it you know basically like while i was while I'm talking with you right now, he most likely launched a new company already and had like 3K with it. Um, but he lists all his revenue and he actually ran out of space. I don't know if you've ever seen this or realized this. He actually ran out of space. He had to book the revenue of his book into like the, the line below because he makes like, a, there's another project where he makes money. A freaking gold star. But what he does really, really well from my point of view is he takes a tech and quickly applies it to like ideas. And some of these ideas are obvious, you know, like photo AI or whatever. Um, but more importantly, he moves really fast. And uh, that's like one of the main like suggestions I have when you actually look for ideas is build stuff. Like get familiar with new stuff and understand how it works. And um, one second, I, sorry for the typo here. I don't know. Um, so the main, the main reason why I'm thinking like this here is from my point of view, when, when I understand technology properly, I have an, I, I see it as a new tool I can use, like a tool in the sense of like a toolbox, you know, like a hammer, screwdriver, all this kind of stuff. The moment you understand a product properly, like in the moment when you understand like a, a new technology properly, you can actually all of a sudden apply to all kinds of new problems that you know. You can like just say like, hey, let's do that, but like with this new tech. You know, like try to solve it or like let's do an old problem with like a new uh, opportunity like mobile OI or whatever, you know. But for me, more importantly, it's like if I actually prototype with, with stuff and I don't know if this is tr the true with you uh, uh, as well. I understand it way deeper than any abstract articles I read about it. And most of the stuff out there, like from LLMs to even like including Langchain, everything, um, uh, data extraction down to bots to anything is actually surprisingly easy uh if you really really break it down you know the the beautiful thing here is like you understand the boundaries and you also understand like where this stuff is like uh has weaknesses and where it has strengths so for example like it's now really really easy to extract data out of documents out of text and everything that like all of a sudden text is an api and that's like now a tool that you can just like have in your toolbox and like use for stuff and when you do this it's kind of like like going to a gym to train or like going to like a dojo to train you have like all of these skills micro skills you know that you can now like apply to stuff um this is why i'm a huge fan of side projects i personally think side projects is one of the best things ever stupid little ideas is one of the best things ever because they teach you this kind of stuff you know and i honestly don't believe in like reading five articles about this uh, or 50 articles about this um Regarding ideas and evaluation of ideas and finding ideas, uh, from my point of view, positioning is more important than anything else. I, I, I mentioned this like a few times, like I'm a CTO by trade, I'm engineering by education, product is actually the win, okay? You can build the same tech and apply it differently and it will make more money. Position makes all the money. Like I, I realized this during university. I think I told you guys already once, but I realized this during university when I was uh, back then building, um, I called it like computer science prostitution. So I built like uh, uh, apps for small businesses and they basically, whatever they wanted to have, I just made it cheaper, you know, like dev long time, cheapy, cheapy kind of stuff. Um, I built a ton of like, upload forms and like uh, this kind of stuff. And I think every developer has done this at some point. And at some point I came across it like on a, on a, on a product that was meant for lawyers. It was essentially a secure upload space for lawyers. It was nothing else than a form with uh, SSL and like safe uploads and then login and username, password login. I built this for like hundreds of like hundreds, but like dozens of customers of mine, you know, and I charged next to nothing as a student. Those, those, People back then, at least, they charged like 
serious money from these lawyer companies. And that is pure positioning. There's like nothing else. There was no tech difference, no legal difference, no nothing. It's just pure positioning. Uh, since then, I'm trying to find lawyers to sell stuff to because apparently they have too much money. Um, and side aspect here is also like becoming good at seeing problems. Um, most people don't see problems. Um, they work around problems without realizing that this is a problem. This is like, this is how, to, how you do stuff, you know? Yes, I received this per email and then I just like copy paste this into the spreadsheet. Or I, in this spreadsheet, I just do all of these five steps and it's like normal. That's like the thing you do, you know? A good example here, because we talked about it before, is like Slack. Email communication was before an email. Uh, sorry, like a company communication before was an email and nobody was like complaining how horrible it is or anything. I mean, unless you got like an reply all chain. Um, Slack and similar tools just completely changed this. And before that, there was like chats, you know, but they were like for the development team. And like, I still remember like back then having my, uh, uh, <laughs> like my co-founder coming to me and telling me stuff I should type into the, the chat for the developers, quote unquote, the CTO, you know, because he didn't want to like log in. Um, people don't see problems, you know, and that's like one of the big advantages that like product builders have is like the ability to learn to see problems. One quick side note here is a good friend of mine, like Rob, uh, wrote like one of the best books ever, a mom test book. Uh, the idea how you can actually ask people about your product and the, the, the core idea to like allow you to skip the whole book. Okay. The whole core idea is instead of asking them if they if they like your product or would like your product instead of asking them if they have this problem because both is already heavily biasing both of that like the first one is selling the second one is biasing like it's completely lost what you actually want to do is you want to like let them talk about their work let them talk about their day and then gently guide them to where you think are the problems and see if they mention them as problems see how they talk about this you learn the language you learn if it's actually a big pain point or not and in the end you have validated like your idea like or like at least found out that your idea is maybe like not really an issue you know without you ever needing to pitch your idea um, most people are really good in pitching. Most people are really, really bad in listening. Uh, Mom test book. It's finally a book that like outside of Europe, also people recognize, you know, uh, highly recommend. Um, Rob is amazing. Uh, he got recently recast for the new house reboot, which I'm really, really happy for him. You know, he's currently living like in Spain. Uh, he, he's amazing. Guys, if you have ever the chance and you're like in Spain and you can hang out with him, hang out with him. You will have the best time ever. Um, Stay away from obvious solutions is my other recommendation when you like try to find and evaluate ideas. A common one right now is AI assistance. Okay. Like if I build autocomplete able LLMs that can simulate humans, that can do arbitrary like solution approaches, the, the most obvious one is connect, uh, AI assistant app. Before that, it was like text editors with autocomplete, you know, and in between it was like connect your data to LLM. There's like all these like default ideas that people have where dozens, if not hundreds of people are working on the same stuff. You know what I mean? Um, stay away from those, especially if you don't want to go for VC funding, even if you want to go for VC funding, stay away from that. There's very few companies where I think they should go after. And it's like, usually like if you can be one of the one or two that can actually win it, you can raise the money. You got the right team and you all got like what is usually called in the industry like the right to win like you have the right background the right knowledge the right team like everything you know then go after them but like in almost all cases stay away you know but like stay away and like we we'll get to this in a second number two also stay away from in my opinion at least stay away from like holes in platforms which how at least i call them so every platform out there is currently not good in some little thing you know, and it's very, very common for somebody to be like, hey, let me just fix that because so many people are trying to use this platform. Can be a good idea for like a few months, you know, and if you're like fast enough, you can use this as like a starting point to like another idea and like a bigger idea. That's great. You know, in many cases, you will just be as, as Sam Altman calls it, like getting steamrolled because they will obviously improve their own platform. Okay. So these are the the two things I usually use to evaluate, like, and that I personally like try to stay away from. Um, and so, like, this is where you stay, should I stay away from. But like, what is actually like a good area to look for ideas? And in my opinion, it's the second degree effect. Um, 
there's like the classic the classic recommendation here is like go after niches so like can you use llms but for lawyers or something like that right um i think something that's a little bit more interesting is second degree effects so for example um in a world where everyone does now x you know everyone uses x for something um what will change okay so like a lot of people will build the x and some of them will be successful you know because y was always a problem we had so now everybody's using x to do y what is the obvious outcome like what what happens if that like that's a thing you know and my favorite for example is like right now everybody's using llms to <laughs> apply for their jobs many are actually using it to automate applying for jobs and you know like like let's just apply to 500 jobs and see what happens and like each one is personalized recommendation letter blah, uh, uh application letter and all this kind of stuff you know all of a sudden like all the job um hr teams you know they receive like hundreds of like auto generated llm uh, job applications what is changing for them like okay now like their life is horrible they need ways to filter this they need ways to evaluate this like on, on scale as well but also like in reality this changes how people approach hiring in total like if by default if you open a job you will just be spammed you will not open that job this way anymore in like let's say five years from now you know so how can you approach hiring uh, differently here or how can you help them at least in the in-between phase to filter this like can you build an ats that just assumes that everybody spams you know uh, another one is, for example, um, AI. Like everybody, it gets really, really easy now to create fake images of people. People will build like deep fakes. They will do like fake images and all this kind of stuff. What is the stuff that you can uh, do to uh, uh, solve this? You know, like what is like what is the obvious thing you want to do now? And a, a, a lot of people are thinking here, like I need to build an algorithm that allows me to uh, detect if this image, you know, is like a fake. That's really, really hard to do, you know? What's easier is, for example, think about like what are the deep fake areas that are usually done and can you find ways to recognize those earlier and like avoid the damages? So for example, a common one is because we already are like, it's an audio show already, you know? Let's say there is like um, deep fakes of uh, uh, influencers, you know? And they're like naked or in bikini or whatever, you know? And there's, um, those will be shared on certain sites. Those will have like, maybe they change their name slightly and so on and so on, you know, and the influencers will need ways to take them down. And all of that can be like comparably easily automated. There's companies doing that. You know, that's a typical second degree effect. Um, another one is like, we are, we are ranting about GDPR, but like realistically, every country in the world will have something similar in like the next few years, you know? So if that becomes more common, what changes? And like the obvious answer is here, like now I need like better tools to, you know, um, see where my data is and so on and so on. But like, imagine you're the IT head of something, you know, and you now need to like, okay, we're using this SaaS solution in America. We're using this, 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 here's this private information. This is the, at some point you're like, just like, you know what? I want everything self-hosted, you know, screw this. I'm no longer allowing any SaaS unless it's like self-hosted or within my cluster or within my DMC. Like I want to have control over this. You know, and that changes like how I, uh, IT solutions will work, you know, and there will be like, a, there's a lot of others and maybe I'm wrong with my guesses what second degree effects are. But for me personally, those are like really, really interesting areas to look for new ideas. And those can be VC fundable or not. That's like up to you. Right. Um, and they're also like frequently a little bit more, you're like a little bit more ahead of the curve than classic, like take an LLM and apply to law or something like this, you know, because the problem you have with these kind of ideas, the current solutions will also do that so for example if you say like customer care but now with llm all the customer cares are doing it you know and i mean so a little bit like second degree effect um one second cool um i think this is my last one actually and then we jump into demos um stick with it uh, and fail forward okay and i'm not saying like stick with like horrible ideas what i'm saying is what I did in my past is I jumped between ideas and I jumped between ideas that had nothing to do with each other, you know? So I couldn't reuse my learning. I couldn't reuse this, uh, 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 the, 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 the Intel I already acquired. I couldn't reuse my network. I couldn't reuse my, like nothing, you know? So I currently always believe like, like pick an area you care about, you know, like a customer or a problem and like kind of stick with it. 
I also know a lot of people who just like stick roughly with like an approach to problems, you know, or approach to ideas and solutions and, and they, they have like always the kind of same way like levels like, like Peter is a good example but they quickly build something throw it out there see what happens you know there's other people that are just like and that's why also like one of my recommendations is like always stick with the tech stack roughly you know um, the main reason here is like even if you face plant and you just like you try to walking and you just like fall flat at least you moved a little bit forward you know what I mean like you at least like your own body is like in length like forward now you can reuse and reuse and reuse and that's like one thing i did completely wrong for, uh, in the past so that's would be one of my main recommendations okay cool i will wrap up and then we jump into demos and today we have only one but uh, we get there in a second um number one uh decide like side project company or vc backed evaluate all of them evaluate differently and avoid especially if you go co-founders jumping between how you evaluate them Okay, like decide beforehand, how do you evaluate if something is an idea you and your team want to work on and try to roughly stick with it because it's really, really easy to play like devil's advocate. Um, use, if you want to go funding, focus on areas and narratives that currently get funding or find ways to survive until they go, uh, which is really hard. Um, jump onto new ideas and actually build with them. And ideally for uh, non-VC cases, this is like right now a perfect time to do. Um, Learn how to see and uh, validate ideas. Read the mom test book, highly recommend. Um, avoid the obvious use cases and rather like think about like if everybody builds this obvious use case and everybody starts using this obvious use case, what is the world changing into? You know, what is the other side of this? Like what's happening afterwards? And like those are usually really, really strong idea areas. And number three, and uh, the last one is um, like you will fail 100%, but like try to keep roughly within a vector. So that you, when you fail, you have like stuff you can compound on. You know, uh, a friend of mine uh, uh, basically, okay, this is a too long story, but like sh a short stories, short version here is, uh, if you work in like w roughly one industry for a long time, even if everything fails, in the end you're like a consultant, like an expert for this industry, and like this is a, this is what happened to a friend of mine, and he's like a very very well known uh, consultant now. But like, this is another, another story for another time. Cool. Awesome. I think we're jumping into demos. So guys, um, how is the energy level? Is this like, is this useful? Is there like something interesting here? But also like, what's your thoughts here before we jump in, actually before we jump in? Like, do you have any other thoughts? Like anything obvious that I missed? Anything where you like feel like, yeah, this is nice, but like ABC is like absolutely missing here from your point of view. This is the part where I should plant actually people in the chat, you know, and like pay them to 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 reply so that I <laughs> it looks like completely natural in that very moment. Yeah, today is like a slow day. Cool. Uh, we jump into demos. OK, uh, today will be a little bit shorter. We'll only do one demo because I want to make sure that I keep the session a little bit tighter and I can I need to run to the conference afterwards to help them with something um, today. The first demo and the only demo actually for today. One second, let me open this. Thanks, Seth. At least somebody believes in me. The rest of chat hates me. Okay, let me get my guest in. It looks like I'm. Like, it looks like I'm scaring into this guy. Hey, Dominic, give me one second. I put, hey. you, I put you on the main one. Hey, Harding. Go one second. Does this work? This works perfect. One second. I have I can have too many monitors. Okay, this is awesome. Hey, Dominic, how are you doing? Hey, doing well. How about you? Uh, good. Uh, 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 slept horrible. Talking a lot of nonsense, <laughs> um, <laughs> and this kind of stuff. Okay. Um, <laughs> so um, we currently have. Let me check how many people are watching. I have no idea actually because the Twitter numbers are always cooked. But like, if I don't know. Let's say 100 people. I think it's a little bit less today. But um, what what would be useful for you? So, like, I obviously would love to see your product, you know, and like talk a little bit about this. Would there be anything else that you want to get out of this? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of like an intel, like interested on um, like we are currently closing the first pilot customers, and mm -hmm. if anyone out there is like interested on like you know doing a research project together, like it's more R and D heavy at the moment, so. 
actually using this. Yeah, that's kind of what we're looking for. Awesome. Uh, shall we like do it like this that you quickly like open landing page screen share, like show us a little bit what you're working on, maybe a demo or something like this? Yeah, sure. We awesome. can do that. Um, then just opening this up and going to share my screen here. Cool. Do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, so basically what we are working on is uh, Simulatrix. Um, the idea is like we want to simulate your customer base and we are using LLMs for that. So um, I was like, maybe as a bit of a backstory, I was like in, in Silicon Valley last year for like mm -hmm. three months and was looking for my next venture and uh, wanted to like find, you know, like I, mean, I had like kind of like, I'm coming from a software engineering perspective and looked into data science and in my last, like, previous company, we, we gathered like data from 5 million people. We had a lot of data, but we were not really able to like do really useful stuff with the data, mm -hmm. uh, which was mainly also because, I mean, LLMs were not that progressed and uh, yeah, you couldn't do much. And so, yeah, when I was in uh, like in SF last week, last year, um, I basically came across this like idea by someone at OpenAI. What if we mm -hmm. use LLMs and kind of like use them to simulate human behavior. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty intrigued by this idea because mm -hmm. yeah, there are simulations out there for various reasons. Like you can simulate like physical simulation or something like that that's already existing and helping us to mm -hmm. build things in the world. And like, um, but it's already possible like yet to simulate like human being in some sense. And I mean, I definitely know that this is like in trying saying that it's like, um, yeah, of course, we are not there yet, but uh, what we want to get to is that we want to like look into customer bases and that we could like really like focus on a certain like niche topic. We can simulate your customer base for that and mm -hmm. based on data you already collected. So, and okay. um, what, what kind of data would that be? What kind of data would that be? So, we, we, there would be data you're kind of like. That's why we're mainly going on larger enterprises, mm -hmm. which you already collected on the on the market. So mm -hmm. mainly like um, like surveys you put out there and like data you collected, how like your target audience, like what they answered and what they said. So um, let's mm -hmm. say like you have a questionnaire out there and they answered, okay, they cast they they their buyer behavior. Mm -hmm. That would be something we can work with. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, when you say simulate in this case, it's like. Um, simulation for like service, for example, is this correct? Yeah, the, we are not only like augmenting service, but we are like actually kind of like fine tuning LLMs on the mm -hmm. data. Mm -hmm. And so we create this, we call them like digital twins. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of like create like creating these digital twins um, out of the customers, which you then can like query and like kind of, you know, like also ask them like other, like based on other questions, which were not in the initial survey. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, like show me something. That's actually really interesting. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we have basically two things. So like what I we have this here, like that's what we call like our like co-pilot mm -hmm. for like for audiences. And basically how it works is that you can like create an audience and um wait a second, yeah, no, it's loading. So you can create an audience and you can basically upload your data. Like at the moment you, we like support CSV and like any data format. And um, then we are kind of like fine tuning an LLM based on that. And mm -hmm. then you can interact and you create personas and you say, okay, who's actually like, who's my target, who's my target person. So you like, specify demographics, but also psychographics and so on. And you can like give them certain attributes. And then based on that, you can prompt it. And what we have here is, for example, like a demo I kind of created was like sunscreen lovers. Um, so basically, there's this company who wants to test like the messaging for a new sunscreen line. Mm -hmm. And uh, we kind of like created this audience for them already. At the moment, it's still like the, like, the fine tuning needs like several hours. So it would be hard to like, demo this directly here, like how the fine tuning is working. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it takes a lot, like a bit of time. But, um, yeah, then we already like uh, created this audience and we have different personas and I can also jump into a persona and we kind of like tweak this persona to be like, to represent these certain demographics here. Mm -hmm. You can also kind of like go in the chat and like prompt different things. It's still like explorative, but um, yeah, that's what we have here. And then you can basically select 
one or many personas and prompt them mm -hmm. and basically say, okay, we want to try out the messaging on them. And then we get customized with like, uh, get a synthetic response from each. And I kind of prepared this little blurb if we can put in here. Mm -hmm. Make this a little bigger. And then we're like, so we are like launching this new sensory line, which is an example. And what do you think about this messaging? And then we can basically submit this. And after a few seconds, it will start generating this. So it's basically prompting our model now in the background. Mm -hmm. And for each of the personas, it gives you like a like a customized answer for each. And um we are kind of prompting the model based on the based on the attributes you specified in the persona. Mm -hmm. So that it actually like kind of answers from each point of view. Okay. Can I also do like more complex service? Like this is like this feels like this makes sense. This is like kind of like I uh, uh, combination of like pre-training plus like prompting and I have like multiple characters like it's very similar like basically <laughs> this is the, the the business equivalent to like an AI girlfriend you know what I mean um, can yeah. you do also like more <laughs> complex service yeah we can I mean what we kind of have in place is that we we have this demo which I kind of opened up here already mm -hmm. um, so we call it our synthetic audience benchmark tool where we basically benchmarking like, I like, uh, I like how I like the do, you have, do you have something like this and you're like yeah yeah I have your tab I already have it. <laughs> like not even like <laughs> opening the tab it's like yeah it's already here <laughs> okay sorry I interrupted you okay, uh, what am I looking at no, uh, so <laughs> the left one is yeah. a baseline and the right one is synthetic so like the left one is real or what is the left one the left one is the real panel we kind of like we conducted so oh, on wow. skincare uh -huh. so it was actually something we showed to like yeah, like a, um, a prospect customer, they were mm -hmm. interested on that. And um, then we asked them, like, was a skincare panel we conducted? And then we fine tuned a model, which you can see in the middle, okay. um, based on skincare trends. And then also, like, I mean, what we, we just scraped data basically for that, because, I mean, we didn't have, like, input data from a customer mm -hmm. for that. But we scraped data. We also visualized it. So I kind of, like, have this map here, which is pretty cool, I feel. Mm -hmm. And you see like the different like the different data points. It's like basically the data set we used for the for the fine tuning. And um it was mainly like brand data and data like blog posts. And we mm -hmm. what, what we're trying to do is like we kind of like get this pipeline that we can identify like positive as also negative sentiments of like articles and so on. So that mm -hmm. you really like what, what we notice is like, you know, like what we actually want to solve is like that. If you go on a jet gpt and you ask it like to be this person it yeah it will give you that reply of course but the jet gpt is like giving you a distribution giving you the average person and they cannot really well map like different personalities and different like personas yeah and it doesn't have a strong opinion like if you ever interacted with it you know that you know that the answer makes sense, you can yeah. do that but also that how, yeah. how close is we're the... trying to bring that in how close is like if you go back to the survey for a second? So like the the, the text yeah. autocomplete is like cool, you know, but it it feels like a thing that's uh, I'm not saying it's like small or anything, but like this this like this one here, like the survey data here feels like the 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 kind of like okay, taking it one degree further, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, have you run like this like multiple times? Like how close does it actually get to the real baseline? Yeah, so of course we run it like I mean yeah, we are still. Uh... Working on yeah, it's still exploring different yeah. fine tuning. <laughs> of course, you tried it more than once. But <laughs> you tried it a lot of times. <laughs> and um, this is a like was a pretty good result. Or like mm -hmm. uh, this one idea we're now actually like developing and like it's still like in development, but like almost done. We we completely like overworked the fine tuning me method, and so mm -hmm. we are like looking to like closer results even. Mm -hmm. But what you can see is like I feel like on the right side you see this scatter plot, and you have already like you see some. Um, correlation. correlation between the mm -hmm. like, yeah and we we tried it also to run against like a cloud opus or a gpt4 mm -hmm. and we didn't get that close like that's what we what we saw in our research interesting do you um like what's the typical reaction of the customers are they like trusting this is this like close enough for them or is this just like is i mean i could imagine this to be like the use case here is like uh, uh i tried like five times with synthetic users and then when i roughly have a shape 
I actually do a proper survey to like my actual customers, you know, but like not waste that moment kind of situation. Yeah. Is this like how it's currently used? Or like, do they trust the synthetic data good enough to like, just like, you know, like screw humans. We, <laughs> the, the AI lords have spoken. This is the thing we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually pretty interesting because we, we, we just closed like a major enterprise deal mm -hmm. and um, we talked to the head of AI for them and he told us that, um, is actually like i mean of course it needs to have some accuracy but for them it wasn't like you know that wasn't the major thing they like said told us okay we rather are like interested in robustness that you can actually like run this over and over again mm -hmm. and it will come up with sim similar results yeah so it's not sense. completely random yes but it makes sense yeah because but... also like what what we saw so far is like these surveys are always examples and they they're also not 100 percent the ground yes. truth out there so surveys can also be just like you know it's like limited in some sense and of course we want to like still get to the baseline of like humans it's kind of like what, what we measure but that's why um i feel like robustness or like replication is much more important than, than accuracy this is a uh, very common actually in data like in analytics as well like you want to you care it's basically the idea between accuracy and precision you know what i mean like yeah. you, you want to make sure that even if it's wrong it should be wrong always the, roughly the same the same way <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. and you prefer yeah. something that's wrong yeah. but like consistently wrong Versus something that's more yeah. accurate, but like kind of not the same way. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, yeah, makes sense. What is the extreme version of this? Like, like let's say like technically, let's say this will work good enough. You know, and now I can all of a sudden do like service in within like seconds that I used to do within weeks. You know, uh, the yeah. price of a survey runs down to nothing. What is the extreme yeah. version? Can I like do? Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, fast testing with service, kind of like literally take any potential permutation of ideas that we could have running in your survey and then like look for outliers? Or will this just create like random noise? No, that's, that's kind of the idea. I mean, the, the idea okay. is really that you, could, uh, that you can run every decision, like even like, let's speak as a company, every, every decision in the company is like first run via our tool. I mean, we still need to translate that in certain, like mm -hmm. need to make the input really like easy. But then you can just like test everything on the on the real customer already. And of course, the, we don't have the precision, but we have the like we have speed, so you can just do that in minutes instead yeah, of. Yeah, like, that basically like run literally for... every possible path against it and see what yeah. happens. Yeah, interesting. Um, I assume there's a lot of people who do something similar-ish, right? Like I know at least of like one similar company. Um, like like how do you currently see think of this market? There are definitely some competitors out there and like i feel actually over the i mean i started like working on this uh, end of last year and mm -hmm. they are more and more also coming up which i'm kind of like seeing on the on the market topic up but um like from the beginning we kind of like had a really like strong r d focus so like mm -hmm. we really want to invest in technology and like you know we're really building working with fine-tuning techniques we're not using just like a the GPT, which we are prompting in some way, mm -hmm. um, we're really editing the models and try to try different ways. And what we just signed with these enterprise customers, mainly like an RD contract. So they pay us like to do like research with them mm -hmm. and get this to the next level. And I feel like that could be our competitive edge that we actually like, we have a better, I mean, at the end, you need a better product. And um, cool. uh, yeah. Um, uh, one company I know, which is pretty cool, uh, that I think they're more like bootstrapping, but like it's uh, kind of in the same area. It's called Synthetic Users. They do. They're going more yeah, like no. towards uh, classic <laughs> yeah. service, I think. You know, um, yeah. uh, like run by Hugo, like a Hugo, like a cool guy. Um, yeah. I, I think this could be it's like this could be like become its own industry almost. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, like I know actually Synthetic Users, and um, mm -hmm. also talked to Hugo once or twice, and um, they are on a bit different. I mean, the product seems maybe a bit similar, but like what they're not doing is like just kind of like that they're editing their models. So they're just prompting it mainly. And um, it, yeah. yeah, I'm not saying it's better it, yeah. or different. It's just saying like it, this feels like but an yeah. area that becomes like could become its own industry almost. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I feel mean, like it's not even like, I mean, the, the entire market research area is like really like like fragmented but it's kind of like also more in addition to like existing methods out there so like service wouldn't be replaced it's more like an addition to what's out there and mm -hmm. what you have yeah and in, in, in worst case it could be something where you just like test run like 10 times with like synthetic you know and then when you like yeah. feel like you got a hang of it you run it with like real you know 
So it may, yeah. even, even for that use case, like already makes sense. Awesome stuff, dude. It's really promising. Thanks. Um, any any feedback or any anything that I could be useful for you? Yeah, I mean, like uh, as I said initially, like looking for other like larger companies. I mean, we we're mainly looking into the fast moving consumer good area because mm -hmm. they have a lot. Like they actually want to test a lot of like the potential users mm -hmm. and. The main thing is there, you know, like for our fine tuning, we already need some data in place mm -hmm. and they have like data collected. So if you know companies that's, out that's there, which really cool. like... there's, um, it's, it's a little bit random, you know, but like, um, a friend of mine <laughs> back in the days, what the one thing he tried and back, back then it was, the tech wasn't just like not good enough yet, you know, but what he tried is he, uh, paid for, um, must have been hundreds of eye tracking studies, you know? Uh, okay. and with, like, <laughs> eye tracking heat maps and everything and his idea was back then it was like it worked but just not good enough yet was the idea that you could send a new design of a website and instantly see where people would look you know and like what works and what doesn't mm -hmm. what recognizes you know and, uh, and this feels like almost like similar like if you take this to the logical extent like right now you're doing it with text and like this kind of service but like theoretically speaking you can train do the same idea and like apply to like visuals as well as soon as this gets a little bit better you know what i mean yeah. Um, yeah. obviously not that yeah, easy, definitely. but you, you also would need like a really, really strong corpus of like test data. And I don't know where you could get that, but like, if you say that, like they already have like history of like service, maybe there is something, you know, uh, but it could That's be also like... the other thing. Mm -hmm. There's also the other thing where we, where we look into like larger companies. So, mm -hmm. cause they already collected data and we could like, you know, their kind of database, they are like the market research data they already collected and run our simulations against them or like create the digital trends and test them on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Super cool. Uh, it, it really, 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 really interesting. I think you're like onto something. Personally, I, I'm like not as much as a fan of like what do uh, the bots say, but much more like mm -hmm. the, if you aggregate it, you know what I mean? And you're like running okay. like several hundred times and you just like make simulation software more accessible because simulation software has been around since decades you know but like barely, barely yeah. used you know um and that yeah. feels like something where, where it feels a little bit more approachable uh, for marketing teams yeah. and like product teams and all this kind of stuff you know um i don't think what we also yeah. sorry you go. What, what we, what also is kind of like interesting to us is like okay how could we actually like if you like if you know someone who like have ideas like how could we actually well integrate that into like existing you know how can we make this really like a, a sticky product and i feel like mm -hmm. at the moment it's like some some kind of prototype you have here and something you can play with mm -hmm. but how do we well integrate it into your part like into your into your marketing life cycle or like you know how they how the teams actually work and make it like into the everyday day that they can just run it and make it really like crisp yeah, yeah. And like like, like uh, nice have thing, like yeah. an uh karen test you know like i'm about to send this yeah, yeah, email is there anybody i could offend with it you know uh, yeah. <laughs> is there any typical persona I have that could misunderstand certain language, certain words? Like they won't, they don't understand if I call our product lit, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. is there like stuff like that, that, that could be really interesting. Like almost have like a linter for marketing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. get like feedback on your marketing yeah. efforts before you launch them. Like it's actually, there's, yeah. This is this is what I love about uh, 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 VC. <laughs> By the way, you can say all kinds of bullshit, and like the other person tries to be polite and be like, yeah, that's an interesting idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> but jokes aside, I, 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 there's something really, really interesting by just like saying. So, so, so for example, like uh, Grammarly like highlights a lot of stuff that just isn't that's okay. Like it's not wrong, you know. Yeah. Uh, and especially when it comes to like stylistic changes, you know what I mean. And so I think we're getting to the point where people would be okay if it's like, hey, here's something worth a look. You know, even if it's not like wrong, but like here's something that our bots feel like there could be maybe an improvement possibility or something, you know? Uh, so like almost like linting, that could be cool. Uh, test running a campaign or maybe like rewriting mm. it for like different personas. Yeah. You can literally say like, hey, here's your newsletter. And... Uh, uh, we think based on the personas you gave us, we could like slightly tune the wording here, uh, but like just feedback, you know, like feel free to ignore, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah that's actually a thing. I mean, like, I feel like I really like this idea of like, like linting or like, what do you call it? Yeah, like that you just run it in the background and yeah, yeah. you would also like kind of process it. Like you don't need to make the thinking of like, I mean, that's also a major thing. Like people, what, what I also saw my like, last camp, like 
last company where we kind of like worked in television interaction, which was a bit of but like um we kind of like we saw that it's pretty hard to write to ask the right questions to yeah. the audience. Yeah, exactly. And uh to first formulate them. Yeah. Like like being able in service to ask a question that's like short enough, non-biasing, and people actually get it is like extremely hard. Yeah. The same is also like in yeah. marketing copy, like being able to write like a marketing copy that like resonates with people and that they like that's kind of modern, but like not, not like fits the persona and this kind of stuff. There's like uh, writing tools that help you like writing more clearly, you know, like a, a yeah. Hemingway and this kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. And I almost yeah. wonder if like the same idea and being like you have different persona and like they they they, they almost like light up green or like orange or like yeah. okay this is like interesting for them. There's there's definitely something like in this kind of like real time feedback. I also personally really really like the idea of like just saying um, let's run permutations of product ideas against a potential service and like completely synthetic but like see what put the possible you know what i mean and then realize yeah. that wasabi kit kat could actually be really really interesting <laughs> worth trying you know what i mean yeah what we are also actually looking into is the opposite direction i mean that's mm -hmm. still like really like kind of like an idea like so far but like you know basically if you would have like these fine tuning alarms like we have these models and you would i mean still i think what what we saw is like many companies have kind of like a product but they yeah. don't know who's their target audience yeah so you map it backwards you can basically you look into the embeddings and like the latent space of the yeah. LLM. yeah you could go in there i mean this is like still like in the, in the concept but like yeah, yeah, yeah. then refer it back yeah uh it's almost like there's like multiple things here like one is like around clustering like finding personas in it almost like and deconstructing them and being like hey actually this is more likely the persona that you're describing here you know because based on your language yeah. based on your service you're actually two different kind of groups of people you know uh, yeah. or it is worth trying another angle could also be like the um, the language that they use and cluster that a bit you know or like the mm. problem space mm. that they look at or like the problems they have and like how they talk about them and like cluster that a bit you know uh yeah. there, could, there could be like something really interesting here around like just like I mean that doesn't have to be all you <laughs> i'm not saying like that's like yeah. all, but, like this this could be yeah. like where this quote unquote industry kind of like builds tooling that like afterwards like other mm. tools like incorporate but i could imagine that like in the near future every landing page tool like you have to define the personas and based on those personas the landing page tells you like if that actually fits roughly or if you could tune something or if it maybe should like make it yes. into two or three landing pages you know what i mean um that's yeah. definitely something yeah and you imagine like i mean like how many products are created like each year, which are just like, or companies that created, which just fail because mm -hmm. they like never reach product market fit because they have like from the beginning, there's no customer for that. Yeah. So that's kind of like also the initial idea, like actually fixing that or helping to, you know, build something useful. Like, like, yeah, like we need to push humanity and like, you need to actually fix things on the, on the world. And like, that's a possibility. I, I wonder yeah, if this yeah. resonates so well with me for two reasons, like number one, as an engineer, I'm kind of like, speak to your customer. I'm kind of like, eh, you know what? Let's, <laughs> let's just yeah. like automate that, you know? <laughs> and then number two, like <laughs> automate it with AI because that's way cooler than like actually speaking with them. <laughs> I almost wonder like if, 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 my, if my brain is like, ah, talking to people is way too much effort. Let's just like, <laughs> <laughs> is there a way it can replace humans with shell scripts, you know? Like, <laughs> mm. um, I really like mm -hmm. it. I think it's really, really cool. Unfortunately, like, I don't, I'm not really big on uh, uh, fast-moving consumer uh, good investments, but I, I, I think that there is like a whole universe of like online marketing optimization and this kind of stuff that definitely makes sense. Like I, I, mm. I have like two larger companies in mind that I will send you afterwards. I don't want to like mention now on the stream because that's a bit weird because they might, they, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe next week you yeah, have like no a big worries. political <laughs> scandal and like <laughs> there's a guy yeah, yeah, called Dominic sure. trying to replace humans and you're like there's a big <laughs> PR scandal and everything and then they're associated with it, you know. Uh, who knows? No, uh, like, yeah. uh, <laughs> you try to make the ultimate tool to become cancel safe, but you failed, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I will send you like two companies I have in mind afterwards, but like in general, this is super cool. Is there anything before we wrap up? Is there anything that uh, chat can do for you that would be useful? Anything that um, that would be like uh, 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 like online, like people who watch this that, that they can help you with or that, that, that would be useful for you? Mm, question, I guess they yeah i mean like if they also want to use that they can just sign up on our, our page i mean we also want like basically you know, like actually opening up mm -hmm. and 
even like also offering an API mm -hmm. that everyone can like do that by themselves and can like fine tune their own LLMs. And um, if you also know companies who business might be interested to, uh, yeah, also open for any feedback and like let me know what you think. And, like also, I mean, I'm still like working on this kind of refinement of the messaging. Yeah. You have ideas like how to better phrase that or like really put it out there. Also coming from a technical technical background, so have you have you, you tried like, running like synthetic services? Uh, like synth synthetic users on your, <laughs> your own wording system. <laughs> yeah, like my own system. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I mean, like, yeah. Of course, I mean, also using my product myself, and that's I guess the best way to to improve and uh, to see if there's anything uh, like if people are actually using it. Uh. Super cool stuff. Uh, thanks so much for sharing. Um, if anybody cool. uh -huh. has potential customer use cases, if anybody has like stuff they can uh, help uh, Dominic with, like reach out to him. Uh, I guess Twitter is the easiest, right? Yeah, yep. that's your Twitter. Awesome. Nice. Dominic, thanks so much for your time. Um, uh, yeah, thank you. Let's wrap up. That was great. Uh, uh, I would and... love to, if you have ch time, I would love to chat like next week, like quickly again. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. That's a... This is like something really interesting. Cool, awesome. Great, okay, we'd we'll love to do it. Thank you, have a good night. Good evening, bye. Sweet. That was cool. Um, what do you guys think? Like, uh, can we get finally to the point that we don't have, no longer t have to tell people that they actually have to talk to customers and humans? I would, like, as an engineer, this would be like amazing, you know? Like, <laughs> I, I built a product, I managed to not talk to anybody. Uh, I talked 500 uh, AIs and they actually made it work. Uh, jokes aside, I, I feel like, um, one th problem that a lot of like large marketing teams have, um, and I think this could be the area where this works, is it's really, really hard in marketing teams in many companies to push through ideas um, because it's highly political. And this could almost become like a tool where you get like a little bit of external validation. Like you get like external authorities saying, hey, we, we test ran this. Uh, against uh, multiple uh, test audiences, like uh, uh, artificial test audiences, and got like the data that this might be out of the five ideas that we're currently discussing, the most interesting one, we would like to get a budget to do like something real, like a prototype or like an actual survey or something like that. And this could give people uh, an ability to very, very cheaply get quote unquote political power in a company, like external authority. and. Realistically, this could be something, you know, and the other thing is like a lot of people who work in like mid-sized to larger companies, like imagine you do like the newsletter for like a larger company. This is terrifying, you know, I mean, like you can easily do some big mistake or like do some inappropriate like slight learning uh, language or write something that just like other people in your company don't like that much or whatever. Uh, this could be easily tuned to be like an uh, optimization for like the personas and optimization for uh, multiple like from like sanity checks like linting down to just like making sure you hit the persona copy properly and there's something you can add like stuff like brand language and all these kind of things to it you know like there's multiple angles where you can take this not necessarily saying that like they will do this and i think there's like um, uh, uh, multiple other spaces, but it's just interesting. I think this is like where this whole area will go, you know, like this whole synthetic audiences, maybe is a term, synthetic testing, maybe something like that. Um, and from as it, it, like the logical evolution of this is that you have this as a normal part of marketing. Uh, so I think they're definitely onto something here. And they, I, I have seen a few companies like this, like we mentioned, like uh, Yugo's company, Synthetic Users, which is also very similar to this. Um, not to like piss off Dominic, but like, for example, like this is synthetic users. They do a little bit more like around classic service, you know, um, like uh, in the sense of like get answers and like market insights. There's a few companies trying this out, but this is like an interesting market right now. This is something there, there, there is something that comes here, right? And I almost wonder if you can think of this as a pattern and just say, hey, you know what? I'm anyway working on a landing page tool and I don't know how to differentiate. Maybe I can just like as a part of my landing page tool have like a functionality where people can add personas, uh, can define those personas, can maybe give me five, six other pages that personas are using or whatever, like or like other ways that the, the AI model can be like get like data and then use this as like a way to tune my landing page tool. You know what I mean? Um, and that would be like a very, very quote unquote easy way to stand out and 
a very, very interesting pattern to use here, right? And that, that's something you could apply for a lot of other stuff, you know, like anything where communication is at play, anything where you are like about to send something in honor marketing is an obvious one, you know? But I also bet like on the long run, there could be things here around uh, testing product is like an obvious next one, you know? And there's a few companies trying to do like essentially automated testing of uh, products. But the other angle here could be not the testing for like box, but testing for like reception and feedback and all this kind of stuff. So I, one thing I like to do around ideas, which I didn't really mention in the, in the list there is thinking of the tools that you acquire, not as just like tech, but as pattern, right? And f to me, I think like um, Simulatrix, as they're called, um, kind of like shows really well, like, hey, here's like two, three new patterns that could be interesting, you know? Can I apply this to my own idea? And I think this is like the beauty we have uh, and also like um, we have in our industry. You don't necessarily need to build like a product in the same space as they. You don't even need to build a simulation tool, you know? You can just take some of those patterns and apply it to your own tool, like to your, to your like let's say, let's say landing page tool or to your email client or whatever you're currently working on, right? Um, and then afterwards also like, what is the second degree effect of that? Like imagine everything is hyper-personalized. Is there even the future of landing pages won't be landing pages. It will be like hyper-personal landing pages, obviously, you know, but like, can I do hyper-personal landing pages that self-evaluate, but then also like self-test and then so on and so on, right? And you can take this like in every direction. I'm like just keeping with the landing page because that's a very easy one to like, articulate. But this is like patterns, uh, like using patterns of completely something else, applying this, and then afterwards, like also thinking through second degree effects, which we were talking about today. Coolio. Um, I need to go back to my... One second, this is huge. Okay. <laughs> Looks like I'm watching God. Um, this is kind of it for today. Um, I don't have that much more. Um, in general, like, thanks so much for checking in. Uh, I hope this was kind of useful. Let me quickly go to the starting page of my deck. Jesus Christ, that's a long list. Um, I hope this was kind of useful. Uh, it was fun. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, please send me um, uh, DMs, what I can do better in this show, what would be useful for you. Um, thanks for joining the chat today. And uh, next week, uh, the big topic is Eurohype. Um, if you're from Europe, I can make you actually get it to the point that you're not cringing when you see the European flag. If you're not from Europe, I maybe may convince you that there is something going on. Um, the one thing I especially want to do is I want to actually show data around it and I just don't want to like you know like hype 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 but like actual data around it. cool awesome uh thanks so much uh uh see I like, highly appreciate guys if you have feedback please send it to me also like what I can do differently this is not meant to be a podcast this is not meant me to talk this is like, like I think there's a lot of like people who are working on awesome stuff and could work on like genius stuff if you slightly push and I, I don't say I have the idea how and like the answers to this but I, I want to do this as a space where like kind of like I can share some ideas of mine maybe other people can share their ideas and uh, we, we, we help each other and like all this kind of stuff so like if you have ideas like what I can do differently please DM me on Twitter and like let me know um, thanks so much for watching I will like smoothly zoom out while I watch up there to God thanks so much folks see you later <laughs>